investment in equity instruments. Now, guys, focus on this one here. Now, remember, they've indicated to us that they have sold investments at cost, with a cost value of 150000 but they've sold this at fair value. Now, you with me, in or on our face of our cash flow statement, we need to include the disposal. Therefore, we need to determine what is this fair value, the value that they dispose this of. And in terms of the profit or loss, we need to take this out because this is a non-cash item and this is in our calculation number two. But how do we calculate this? You will remember that they have indicated to us that they will transfer the cumulative gain or loss on equity instruments previously recognized in OCI to retained earnings. Therefore, they indicate to us in terms of this asset that they've sold, they have transferred 45000 Now, remember that this is an after-tax amount. Therefore, we need to determine what is the before-tax amount. Now, guys, I'm pretty sure by now you know how to do this. Calculate X. I've included calculation 20. Now, think about your journal entries. To be able to get to the 45,000, which were transferred from our, from our mark to market reserve to our retained earnings, remember, they will have to debit the investment, credit mark to market reserve, debit mark to market reserve, and credit deferred tax. Therefore, the net effect of the credit and the debit in terms of the mark to market reserve is the 45,000 rand. Now, to be able to obtain that amount before tax, remember, you will have to use X minus X times tax, and this will be your 45,000. Therefore, the 45,000 divided by 0 0.776 and this will be 57990. Now you will remember that they've indicated to us the cost price of this asset sold is 150,000. They've sold the asset at fair value, which we don't have, but we are able to determine what was the fair value adjustments in the prior years due to the fact that they provide us with a movement from our mark to market reserve to our retained earnings and this is the 57990 therefore the selling price will be an amount of 207990 now guys ensure that you remember two things you will have to take this out in your t account number one number two you need to Include this amount on the face of your cash flow statement. Therefore, on the face of your cash flow statement, in our investing activities, this will be the proceeds from disposal of our investment in equity instruments. Please, guys, you will have to write this out. And this is an amount of 207 nine nine zero a positive they've received us and then we need to remember in our t account investment in equity instruments our equity instruments decrease disposal and this is two zero seven nine nine zero and this is your calculation 20. right now we are able to tick off this number six investment in equity instruments and move on incorporation of Rafiki now guys this relates to 20.19 we are able to remember that this is section c of the requirement when we look at this number one busy enterprises were able to borrow at a market rate of nine percent we've used this to determine the present value we don't have to use paragraph two now paragraph three we have determined Guys, now that I think about this, did we take out, did we increase the movement here, guys? Remember this 20200 in our NCI. Remember our NCI has now increased. When our NCI increased, we need to move that amount to our 
T account. Therefore, the partial, this is a NALA calculation 19202000. Right? Awesome that we go through this and that you do remember these things, guys. Let's just tick this off for. And they indicate to us that Bisney declared a dividend of 55800. Therefore, let's transfer this to our calculation in terms of shareholders for dividends. If they have declared a dividend, think about your journal entry. Our journal entry will be to credit the dividends declared, guys, shareholders for dividends. We credit our shareholders for dividends with a 55800. And we need to debit our dividends declared. We debit our retained earnings, right? We can tick off number four. Number five, total amortization, 385000. Again, guys, think about this. You need to take this out. It's non-cash. And you need to include this in your T account. Therefore, let's take this out, adjust for non-cash items, and this is the amortization provided to us. Remember, you do not have to write this out. This is your calculation. I do this for you to be able to follow my discussion. And we need to include this in our T account. Our intangible assets will decrease on the credit side. Therefore, this is our amortization. 38500, right? And we are able to tick off number three. Five, cash flows from interest and dividends. We have included this in the operating activities. Goodwill. Oh, guys, we still have to test our goodwill for possibility of impairment. Why? Because if our goodwill is impaired, they will debit the expense, and then this will still be included in our other expenses. And they will credit goodwill. Therefore, when we look at our goodwill T account, when we look at calculation eight, our goodwill. Now guys, remember, please do not waste time in the exam to add the credits and the debits and write it out. Purely add the debits and credits, identify on which side you need to balance. Therefore, when you look at this, the total debit side is 482616. Therefore, on the credit side of our T account, there is impairment of goodwill. An impairment amount of 19,000. Now, this is calculation eight, and remember, this will be included in our other expenses. Therefore, we need to add this back. This is the impairment of goodwill, calculation eight, and we will have to add this back, the 19,000. We need to take out our non cash items. Right, therefore, we are able to tick off. Seven and eight relates to our normal income taxes. Guys, now you need to refer back to your T accounts or technically all of your calculations. Let's look at calculation one, cash receipts from customers. We are able to complete this, but we need to determine what is the movement in our trade receivables. When we look at our T account, we are able to calculate the movement in our trade receivables trade and other receivables. This is calculation number 10. Now let's calculate the balancing figure. Right, please remember, don't waste time to include totals on the debit and credit sides of your T accounts. Immediately determine your balancing entry. When we look at this, our balancing entry will be the 58310. Now think about your journal entry. They have debited trade receivables therefore credit bank and our bank decrease calculation 10 transfer this is our calculation number 10 include this is a decrease to the value of 58310 therefore our total cash receipts will be 12496490 and immediately guys let's transfer this to our cash flow statement Remember, as and when you complete your calculations, please, please transfer this. Cash receipts, calculation number one, and this is an amount of one, two, four, nine, six, 
1.490. Now let's complete calculation number two in terms of our cash paid. When you look at calculation two, we still need to include our changes in working capital. Now this is in terms of our inventory and our trade payables. When we refer to our T account of our inventory, I have added my debits and the credit sites and my balancing figure will be 23060 on the debit side. Therefore, when you think about your journal entry, you will have to debit your inventory and credit your bank. And this is a decrease. Calculation 9. Let's transfer this. Decrease. Calculation 9. Therefore, guys, this is not an increase. It's a decrease in our bank account of 23060. Right. Then we need to move on to our trade payables. Trade and other payables. My balancing entry will be on the debit side. Now think about this one, guys. When this is on the debit side, sorry, guys, no. My balancing entry, I'm looking at the B, therefore I said debit, sorry. My balancing entry is on the credit side. Therefore, debit your bank and credit trade payables. Therefore, bank increase in your calculation trade and other payables this is an increase you just check my calculation 15 calculation 15 and this is a positive 1681950 and our total will be 404260 brackets remember guys you need to ensure that you understand your brackets I prefer to make use of negatives because this is my cash paid. And let's immediately transfer this to the face of my cash flow statement. Guys, 404, another 4 at the front. Right, to my cash flow statement, brackets 4404260. Right. Now we need to complete our cash flow statement. Therefore, we need to complete all of our calculations, our T accounts. When we look at our cash flow statements, we still have to determine our dividends paid. Now, to be able to do this, we need to complete our NCI T account, identify the dividends relating to our NCI, transfer this to the shareholders for dividends T account, and our balancing figure in the shareholders for dividends will be the dividends paid. Therefore, when you look at this, my NCI, I've already calculated the totals and our balancing figure in our NCI will be on the debit side, an amount of 3358. We need to transfer those guys to our shareholders for dividends, the credit side of our shareholders for dividends, and this is the 3358. Therefore, we are able to determine that we have a balancing figure in terms of our shareholders for dividends. Calculation number 12, and this is an amount of 4158. And let's transfer this to the face of our cash flow statement. Calculation 12. This is dividends paid because when you look at the T account, we debit our shareholders for dividends. And we credit our bank, 4158. Right, now we need to determine the income taxes paid. To be able to do this, we first have to complete the deferred tax. The balancing figure we need to transfer to our income taxes paid. Calculation 13, our deferred tax. Therefore, I've already included my totals and my Balancing figure 109450 that we now need to transfer to our current tax payable. Therefore, if we transfer this, guys, 109450 calculation 13, or I'm pretty sure my marker will be able to identify the green. I am able to determine that there is a balancing figure in my current tax payable of 57588. Remember, we debit the payable, therefore we credit bank. This is a payment, and this is calculation 14. Let's transfer this, calculation 14, and this is a payable. 
Therefore, we need to include our bracket 57588 and our total net cash from operating activities you can include. Right, now let's move on. We need to complete our cash flows from investing activities. To be able to do this, we need to refer to all of our T accounts in terms of our investing activities, complete the T accounts and transfer any possible acquisitions. Right, let's work through our T accounts. Calculation three, our land. When you calculate this, you will identify that there's a balancing figure on the debit side, 90,000. Therefore guys, back to basics. If your asset debits, it's an increased credit bank. Therefore, this is an acquisition of land. Transfer to the face of your cash flow statement. This is acquisitions of our land. Calculation number three, an outflow of cash, 90,000. Next, PPE. You will identify that there's a balancing figure on the debit side. Therefore, when you look at this, this is 300,000. This is an acquisition. Now, guys, my 300,000 is with intangible assets. This is acquisition 421194. An intangible assets balancing figure 300,000. Therefore, guys, we are able to identify that this is acquisitions and let's transfer to our cash flow statement. Acquisitions of PPE. Remember, this is a purchase, therefore 421194. And this is an outflow. Debit the asset, credit bank. Acquisitions of intangible assets and outflow, guys, important. Debit the asset, credit bank. Right. Then when you look at this, we have already completed our intangible assets. We need to move on to the investment in equity instruments. Right, now when you look at the investment in equity instruments, you will identify on the debit side that we will have a balancing figure of 27990. Therefore, let's transfer this to the face of our cash flow statement. Acquisition of equity instruments, calculation six, this is an outflow 27990. Now, when you look at our T accounts, you will identify that we have completed all of our T accounts, guys. If you do have time left, you need to refer back to your scenario, your statement of financial position or the trial balance identify if you have ticked off all of your amounts yes you have then you are able to complete your cash flow statement now let's say for example you do not have time to refer back to the statement of financial position trial balance guys immediately complete your cash flow statement include your totals if your cash flow statement does not balance do not freak out it's not going to balance, guys. Maybe there is something that you didn't identify. Do not freak out because you have transferred everything that you are aware of within the time allocated. But please remember, 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 if you do not transfer your calculations, they're not going to mark your calculations. Please don't send me an email at the end of the exam. Bianca, do you think they're going to mark my calculations? I haven't transferred them. No, guys, they're not going to mark your calculations. I'm sorry. You need to transfer your calculations, please. And I know from a timing point of view, cash flow statements can be challenging. Guys, but follow the guidance, follow the exam technique approach, and just give it your all. Remember, if you do not have time, include totals, transfer calculations, and move on.